Ah, I'm so glad you're here. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Lord Bloodraw. I host horror and science fiction films on my TV series, Lord Bloodraw's Nerve Rack and Theater, but here, in this cool, intimate darkness, I'll be presenting tales of horror and the uncanny solely for you, alone. In this auditorium within your mind, you will coalesce the settings and the players from the ether of your imagination. Your terror will be your own creation. This is the sorcery of sound, the subtle magic of old-time radio horror. horror. Please leave your eyes at the door. You will not need them. This is Lord Bloodraw's Nerve Racken Auditorium. So little is known about the true nature of life, about what constitutes a living thing. And since life is so mysterious, it follows that the end of life, death, is also a mystery. Where is the boundary between life and death? <laughs> a weighty enough question without bringing the U.S. legal system into it. Here's an example of what I mean. Here, from Quiet Please, comes the tale, Is This Murder? Quiet Please. Quiet Please. <laughs> American Broadcasting Company presents Quiet, Please, which is written and directed by Willis Cooper and which features Ernest Chappell. Quiet, Please, for today is called Is This Murder? Thank you very much for coming to see me. I would have come to your office, but uh, I'm sorry, infirmities prevent my going out. That's why I have to have it so dark in here, too. I hope you won't mind. Thank you, do sit down. Uh, just put your coat on the chair there. Uh, anywhere. Uh, would you care for a drink? There's some excellent sherry there on the sideboard. At least I've been told it's excellent. Amontillado, I think. Uh, I don't indulge myself, but you help yourself. Please do. I asked you to come here because I think I need some legal advice. About... Murder, I'm afraid. Yes, quite. I'm afraid I'm a little hazy about things legal, so, uh, do you mind? Like the sherry. I've been told it's excellent. Uh, they help yourself, too. Way. I hardly know where to start, but, uh, that door? That's my workshop. I haven't been in there in quite some time. Artificial limbs. Rather unusual ones, if I do say so myself. Well, I've invented a few devices, you see, and they've been quite successful. Oh, yes. Uh, a great many persons wear hands, arms, legs, and so on that I invented. You didn't know my assistant, of course. Well, I don't know. I don't know where he is. As a matter of fact, it's Dan I wanted to talk to you about. Dan and Joyce. Joyce was his sweetheart. No. No, I didn't murder them. It's rather 
rather an awkward story to tell. Uh, are you sure you're comfortable? Good. Have you ever read the works of Mary Wollstonecraft Shelley? Never heard of her. Well, she was the wife of the poet Percy Bysshe Shelley. She was a novelist. She died in 1890, nearly 60 years ago. But I'm afraid one of her novels is more or less uh, responsible for what I'm going to ask you about. You don't... I mean, you aren't familiar with her works. Why, the best-known novel she wrote was Frankenstein. Oh, it's nothing at all like the Frankenstein you've seen in pictures. No Boris Karloff, no Bela Lugosi with a fly left, no weird castles. But it's a powerful book with a very important message. You haven't read it. Well, perhaps you ought to. I was talking with Dan about it one day in a workshop there. We could just about make us a monster with all this equipment, Dan. <laughs> Not a monster, Dan, old boy. I did better than Mr. Frankenstein did. Hmm. At least mine would be good looking. Wouldn't need any spare parts of dead people either. <laughs> no, indeed. Hmm. How'd you get it to work, though? That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> His new arm almost has his own brain. Uh, not much like the one that, uh, uh, Lionel Atwell, was that his name? Uh, yes, Lionel. Uh, wore in the picture. Uh, when he had to manipulate with his other hand. That's good looking, too. Uh, no good without a brain and some live muscles to put it to work, though, is it? Nothing is. That's uh, an intriguing thought. Isn't it? What? Uh... A synthetic man. Wouldn't have to feed him, wouldn't have to pay him wages. <laughs> Great idea. Mm, and he'd be good and strong. There are an arms and legs. Chrome steel fingers and plastic muscles. Chromium plated head with wide angle lenses for eyes. Microphones for ears. <laughs> and what for a brain? Well, you know what Frankenstein used. <laughs> uh, a brain. The wrong kind of brain. That was in the picture. He, uh, he got a criminal brain by mistake, remember? I wonder what would have happened if he'd got a good brain. Right. You've got the book and the pictures. Next up, boy. All right. But what would happen if you could make a synthetic man and put a real good human brain in it, huh? Mm. Wouldn't it be something? Wouldn't it be... Just think of muscles that never tire. A man, a thinking man, that couldn't be harmed by disease. That would be capable of superhuman things. And that would live forever. Mm. Nice. But impracticable, boy. I wonder. Well, now, look, Dan. Don't you go messing up my nice, clean workshop with mechanical men. Ordinary ones are trouble enough. Mm-hmm. That's what Joyce thinks, too. <laughs> Get to work, boy. And be careful with that elbow, will you? It bends the other way. Mm-hmm. You try some more sherry. I'm told it's exit. Oh, yes. Murder they were talking about. Well, uh, uh, let me see. Uh, let me collect my thoughts. Oh, oh, yes, yes. Uh, this first conversation, uh, but I've repeated to you, it took place about six months ago. I beg your pardon? Where is Dan? Well, I'm sure I have the faintest idea. If you don't mind, uh, I like to be orderly, methodical. I think the next occurrence was Joyce's visit to me. Or rather, uh, I met her in the cocktail lounge downtown. Yeah, I haven't been there in a long time. I dropped in one afternoon. Uh, it was three or four weeks later. And I would give me lemonade, I remember. Well, I was sitting quietly, drinking my lemonade. And she suddenly appeared alongside me, sat down at the table before I saw her almost. Why, Joyce, I said. Why? Joyce. Hello, Ernest. What are you drinking? Lemonade. <laughs> of course. Uh, will you have one? Mm, no, thanks. I've got to run. Well, but do have it. No, I, I had a drink. <laughs> I'm just leaving. As a matter of fact, I had two drinks. Three, if you must know. I don't want any more. Oh, what's the matter? Dan stood me up again. Dan? Stood you up? Third time in a week now. Why, how come, Joyce? I thought you were You here. tell me. I'm sure I don't know what. You mean you aren't making him work nights at the workshop? Well, I certainly am not. Well, that's where he is, all right. At the workshop? That's what he says. Joyce, uh, 
My dear, the workshop's right in my own home. If Dan has been in there... Oh. Oh, my goodness. Now, what have I said? If he isn't at the shop, where is he? Oh, I don't know. Look at it. I happen to love that guy. No, I'd it? stake my life, Joyce. He isn't out with somebody else. Uh, another girl, I mean. For his sake, I hope he's not on Well, I... Because if I catch him cheating on me, do you know what I'll do? I'll murder him. Do I have a client to your affairs? Now, you don't need to take that tone with me, Dan. No. Uh, Dan. That girl loves you. So what? Well, now, really, Dan. I'm going to hurry, Ernest, but I've got so many things to think about now. You've never shown any signs of it, old boy. Well, all right. Let's get to work. But I really do think you ought to give more consideration to Joyce, old boy. Listen, Mr. Dan. You know that talk we had a few weeks ago? Talk? Frankenstein? Frankenstein? Oh, that's right. Have you been letting that prey on your mind, Dan? I've done more than that. I've done more than just think. Do you know what he'd done? I looked. A gleaming chromium plated head. Duralaman arms and legs. And the fingers are high test chrome steel ernest. I used your industrial type hands, you see? I haven't installed the lenses for the eyes, but there's the selenium cells for light to react on. I've got two small microphones for the ears. And look, the hands and arms and the legs are controlled by this on. Why, you're a fool, Dan. Yes, sure. But isn't he a beauty, Ernest? You're a fool. If he only had a brain. Who's that? You idiot. Think so, huh? I'll go. Lock that thing up. It's locked up. Who is it? <laughs> Why? Good morning, Joyce. Is Dan here? Oh, there he is. Well, hello, Dan. Hello. I wonder if you remember we had a date last night. I'm sorry, I was busy. Busy? Where? Here? Yeah, here. Was he here, Ernest? Yes. He was here. Oh. Alone? Yeah. Uh, well, he was... Well? He was alone, Joyce. I don't believe it. Now, look here, Joyce. Tell her, Dan. Listen. Tell me what? Tell me what, Dan? Look. This is all foolishness. Joyce, he... Cut it out, Ernest. Go ahead, Ernest. I tell you that. Hold it, Dan. Uh, 
Look here, Joyce. Stan's been working on a project of his own. What's her name? <laughs> it isn't a her, Joyce. No. Sure, Dan. Now look here. Stop being a fool. Sure. I'm not the cabinet there. Uh, don't you see you're being a fool, Dan? Open the cabinet. I don't Open. want. Well. What in the world's that? It's a mechanical. It's a, it's a monster. <laughs> oh, who do you think you are, Dan Frankenstein? I told you. Let, let's see it. Does it work? It certainly does work. Can it walk? It's made out of some of the artificial limbs I invented. And a lot of other things, too. Can it talk? Bring it out, Dan. It can't talk yet. Why, oh, how marvelous. Make it move, Dan. Look out. I'll make it raise its arms. Press this button here. See? Oh, the other arm, Dan. Why, how wonderful. Uh, Dan! Dan! Sturdy drum with the fingers of chrome steel smashed down on the back of Dan's neck like a sledgehammer. Oh, no, he wasn't killed. That's not the murder I'm going to ask you about. He was paralyzed. That is, his legs were paralyzed. He was in the hospital three and a half months. The doctors did everything they could for him, but there wasn't anything that really could be done. He was helpless. Do have another glass of the sherry. It's excellent, I'm told. Dan used to drink it. And Joyce. Joyce loved it. What? Huh? Yes, yes, I know. I didn't mean to use the past tense. I suppose she still loved it. Huh? Oh, no, sir, I... I assure you I'm telling you... Uh, what do they say in court? Uh, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, indeed. We brought him back here, of course. No relatives, so far as I know. And we were very close, Dan and I. Oh, yes. Uh, Joyce was here frequently. Yeah, that girl really loved... Uh, loves that boy. I suppose it was really pretty frightful having to lie in bed all the time, unable to move. Joyce used to stay here all day and sit with him. And then at night, I'd come in his room, and the three of us would sit around and talk. Uh, mostly about robots, mechanical men, monsters... And I brought the man, uh, the machine, into his room so we could tinker with it while we talked. Then we talked a great deal about it. How do you know it won't work if you put a brain in it, Ernest? It isn't possible, Dan. Frankenstein's worked. Dan, that's a story. Maybe. Maybe it's true. How would you get a brain, Dan? Frankenstein got a brain. And look what happened. But that was a criminal brain. Look, Dan. Even if you could, by some... Miracle, attach a brain to this thing. It'd work. But it wouldn't work right. Why, Ernest? Because man has no business playing around with such things. You think any brain would turn out to be evil just to punish a man for trying to create a superhuman thing like this? That's exactly what I think. Where would you get a brain, then? I don't know. Stop talking this nonsense. The thing is, Ernest, I don't think it's not. Well, it is. Where would you get a brain? If I knew a doctor. Well, you don't. How would you know the brain wouldn't be evil? I'd make sure of that. How? I selected very carefully. Will you stop talking about this? <laughs> Scare you, Ernest. <laughs> you don't have to be so gruesome. I'd pick a woman's brain, I think. Women are smarter than men. Dick. Want to lend me a brain, Joyce? No, I should say not. You'd have a fine time, Joyce. You'd live forever. I don't want to live forever. Nothing could hurt you. You could do anything you wanted. And have to live in that, that metal skeleton? No, thanks. You'd never be hungry. I like being hungry. It's too much fun to eat. And drink. Never be tired. Yeah, I like to be tired, boy. Good night's sleep. I wish I could put my own brain into it. Then I could get up and walk around. Do things. Go places. Oh, stop this morbid talk. This is a playtoy, Dan. You talk as if it's coming to life any minute. All it needs is a good brain, Ernest. Well, I tell you what I'll do, Dan. You tell me where to get a brain, and I'll get it for you. And we'll make a million dollars. How's that? Well... Good night. I'm going home. Gee, I, I'd certainly hate to have Frankenstein here put his arms around me. Is this murder? I mean, suppose a man does take a human brain and put it into the frame of a mechanical robot. 
charge it with colloids that simulate blood in the very brain structure itself. Suppose he does it. Successfully. Is this murder? No. Wait. Before you answer. Suppose that the brain goes right on living. Suppose that the operation, if you want to call it an operation, uh, suppose it works. The brain will never die. Life goes on. The only thing that's missing is the body it once inhabited. Is this murder? The only effect is that somehow or other, while it's in the body, the brain is capable of fine, noble feelings of love, affection, friendship, of all the virtues, in addition to all the vices. Yes, that's true, but, but when it's transplanted, well, look at the Frankenstein story. When it's transplanted, the virtues are missing. Only the vices remain. Intelligence? Yes. Awareness? Sentience? But good is gone. Only evil remains. But that's not the question, sir. If the body only is killed and the mind survives forever, is this murder? You don't have to answer yet. Oh, you... You think you know what I'm driving at. Well, we'll see. Now, I'm going to let the Dr. Sherry do. I've almost finished. Then you can judge. Because I have another question for you. This final thing happened night before last. I went into Dan's room. He was soldering a wire out of the round, chromium-plated head of this thing, uh, this monster. Joyce was sitting alongside him, watching closely. She didn't see Dan wink at me as I closed the door. Hello, Ernest. How do you feel, Dan? Me? I feel fine. Uh, how are you, Joyce? Well, I've got a little headache, Ernest. Oh, I'm sorry. Have an aspirin. I took one. Too bad, dear. Well, how's it going, Dan? I'm more convinced than ever, Ernest. Mm, if you only had a brain. If I only had a brain. Joyce, I, I wish you could do something to snap this fellow out of this. Why? Why? Because, uh... Are you starting to believe this nonsense, Joyce? Well, I don't think it's nonsense, Ernest. You see, she's got a brain on it. Well, certainly she... Oh, Dan, I'm going to take that thing away from you. Take away my pretty Frankenstein? Oh, well, I should say you're not, Dan. Listen, I don't want to say this, but uh, I'm afraid... Uh, I mean, Joyce, don't you... I mean, won't you help me? Help you what? Get Dan's mind off this thing, I mean. No, she won't. Joyce, uh... Dan could only get a brain. Joyce, Ernest... Won't you help me? I will not. Please, Ernest. It's all ready now. All it needs is stop that. Don't, Ernest. Come on, Ernest. Help me. I won't. Ernest. Joyce. Do you know what he's going to do? What? He's going to... Ernest. I know what you're going to do. I know what's in your mind and I won't help you. I... What's he going to do, Ernest? What's... What's in his mind? Come here, Joyce. Lean over here. Ten darling. No, sir. Joyce, dear. No. No, stop. Stop, Dan. Stop! <laughs> when, when I came to, all there was in my mind was a confused memory of a pain in my throat and bright lights. And confused voices and Joyce's laughter. I tried hard to think. I was dazed. My father was lying on the floor. I got up slowly. I saw Dan still lying on the bed. He was smiling at me. He said something. Yeah. Well, I couldn't make it out. And then I heard his voice. How do you feel? Ernest. And I tried to answer. And it was a long time before my voice came. And finally I said... I said... Where's Joyce? Why, here I am, Frankenstein. When I stretched out my hand to steady myself, when I looked at my hand, arms and legs of duralumin, fingers of chromium steel, when I looked in the mirror, when I saw a round chromium-plated head with lenses for eyes, and... You can turn on the light now. If you want to. I ask you the question again. Is this murder? It is. And if a 
steel and duralumin robot takes a life, or more than one life, is this murder. Because I have been murdered, you say. I do not live. I cannot commit murder. Very well. I told you how the force of evil has taken hold of my brain. No, I didn't kill Dan. No choice. Not yet. I told you I didn't know where they are. I do. They're in the workshop back there. I locked her in the closet where my, uh, my body used to be. Then, why, well, he's paralyzed, remember? His hands are strong. But against chrome steel, it won't be murder, will it? It won't be murder either. When I kill you first. Thank you, sir. No, there isn't any more sherry. Yes, these. <laughs> of today's quiet please story is is this murder it was written and directed by willis cooper the man who spoke to you was ernest chapel and the others were joyce gordon and dan o'hurley as usual music for quiet please is played by albert berman and so until next week at the same time i'm quietly yours ernest chapel You may make your own moral judgments on the question of murder in this case, but it is remarkable the power Mary Shelley's classic work Frankenstein holds to this day, how it inspires and tempers modern scientific inquiry with both its mythic wonder and its dire warnings, warnings that gain new urgency as we enter the age of artificial intelligence of sentient computers. The relevant question of the future may well be, is this alive? And who will ask the question, humans or machines? Thank you for joining me in the Nerve Rackin' Auditorium, and I hope you'll come again. But now it's time for you to rejoin the uh, real world. I am Lord Bloodraw, and I'll be waiting here for you in the shadows of your mind until the next time you seek the darkness. Good night. <laughs>